I'm Taisha Ty Wilson. I serve as the Director of Engagement here at Philanthropy Together. And I am joined here by another fabulous, literally fabulous giving circle, the 50 fabulous giving circle. Um, three leaders, Laura, Lisa, and Lauren are here y'all to share about their work, what they have going on within their circle as a source of inspiration for you all who are looking to either start a giving circle, which I hope you are, or if you're like me um, and you already have an existing giving circle, I hope that you'll be informed and inspired by what they share with us today. So we're gonna jump right into the conversation, but thank you all for tuning in to this video and please feel free to share it with others um, because we're all in this together to amplify the work of amazing giving circles like 50 Fabulous Women. So well, welcome Laura, Lisa, and Lauren. That was crazy. Like, oh, so y'all names just- Triple L. Triple L. Triple L's. Triple L's. Yeah. The triple L's. <laughs> welcome. Right. Triple L's. <laughs> Thank you, um, all three of you, for being here and joining us for today's conversation. Won't you? Let's just jump right in. Won't y'all introduce yourself? Tell us the role um, that you have within your giving circle, and we'll start there. Well, first of all, thank you for having us. It's great to have this conversation with you and hopefully help some other giving circles around our country doing the great work that they're doing. Uh, my name is Lisa LaTravato, and I'm the founder and president of the 50 Fabulous Women Giving Circle. Awesome. I will, I'll go jump in next. I'm Lauren Lewis. I am on the, I guess, executive committee with the 50 Fabulous Women Giving Circle. Um, I help a lot with like the marketing and social media for the giving circle. So, and then really anything Lisa needs to help us kind of continue to grow the giving circle and move it forward and be involved. Laura and I work the registration table together a lot of times at our meetings. So, you know, really anything to help us continue to grow and help the nonprofits in our area. And I'm Laura Kirkpatrick. And just as Lauren stated, I'm part of the executive committee as well. Uh, you know, whatever Lisa says, we do. Um, but <laughs> with really memberships, <laughs> she asked nicely. So, of course, we do. <laughs> I do a lot of the documentation of memberships who's coming to meetings. So we can track that, you know, uh, through Great Brian, we track who is paid for that quarter. Um, so, a lot of the documentation stuff and keeping um, our mailing. Um, coordinator up to date with new members that come in. So they're being all too humble because these ladies are the reason I, I'm able to, to do whatever I do all day long and keep the giving circle going. So these ladies are the backbone that really make everything run and every meeting really smooth. And, and that's why I'm so grateful for both of them. Oh, I love that so much. And you know what? Even just y'all intros is uh, enlightening and informative because a lot of Giving Circle, we, we share so much about the importance of you having a team and us dividing and conquering the work, y'all, because we're all volunteers in this, right? We're mamas and working professionals and we're involved with so many other things. So even that piece of y'all sharing the different roles and how y'all are chipping in is helpful. All right, Lisa, since you the uh, mama bear guide in the ship, why don't you jump in and tell us the overview? Tell us, um, start with the why. Why, why y'all, why, what's the story behind why y'all even started 50 Fabulous Women Giving Circle? And why don't you share also the details? How many members y'all have? How are y'all structured? How, how much do members contribute? Just that whole juiciness behind the structure of your giving circle. Absolutely. So I was very fortunate in my life to have amazing women who, mentored me and uh, really grew me into the leader that I am today. And in 2018, two of those leaders, one retired and one passed away. And that's a really jilting moment in your life as a young woman going, oh my goodness, the layer above me is gone. It's my turn now to put my hand back to help that next generation of women up. Now, what am I going to do? And I kind of had an idea about what I wanted to do, but I did a lot of research. I heard this thing about giving circles. And so I did a not, lot of research over the next year. And then in 2019, I invited about 30 people um, to a get together. I think only 13 showed up. And I said, look, I got this crazy idea. It's called the giving circle. We're going to call it 50 fabulous women. I think we at least we know 50 women. We can do this, right? I mean, 50, come on. We're going to get together four times a year. And we're gonna to listen to uh, presentations from small non-for-profits who have a budget of a million dollars or less. And we're gonna have three groups pitch. We're gonna choose one and we're all gonna donate $50. And we're gonna bundle it together. 
like they do in politics, but except for a better cause. And uh, we said, okay, they, they, they bought it. And my grandmother would use this to say to me, you know, take the spaghetti, throw it against the wall, see if it sticks, right? Well, it stuck. So mm -hmm. we, we, it worked. And then by the May meeting, we already had 50 people. Holy cow, mm -hmm. how did, and it's all word of mouth. It's grassroots. Uh, we're mm -hmm. not formalized at all. We, we don't have a 501. We are grassroots. Whatever money we get four times a year that we collect from the members, $50 a member, that money all gets collected and goes right to the charity no overhead. If we need something, we reach in our pockets and we buy it. That's how it goes. And we're very fortunate for sponsors like Seneca One, who actually give us the space to have our meetings and provide us an opportunity for someone to buy a beverage or, or some food before the meeting. Um, so that so that's who we are. We are a, a, a group of dedicated women who want to see our community thrive and women and children get every resource they could possibly need. I think like just to chime into what Lisa is saying too, um, I think what really kind of captured a lot of our members' attention and interest in being part of the group is we all wanna be part of something bigger. And you know, sometimes we're not in a place to donate the big, the big bucks to organizations to support them, but it's you know contributing our $50 a quarter to these organizations and combining it and collectively that makes a huge impact with these organizations. And each quarter we get submissions from nonprofits that are applying for our grant. And like Lisa said, the three finalists come and present to our, to our group and we hear their stories, they pitch to us, tell us what they're gonna do with the funds and we all vote. And the impact that is made is like just huge. You can really see the impact from the presenters. I think a lot of our members do wanna really kind of support those organizations where we can make an impact where our money collectively is gonna be a big different differentiator for that organization to take it to the next level and really support those women and children in our community and help these grassroots nonprofits start building and building beyond their means, which has we, been an amazing thing to see over the year, years that we've been, been around. Very true. And we're more of the seed funders and we help these small not-for-profits actually get metrics that those bigger funders are looking for. So that's what we're able to actually uh, provide. And now I let Laura talk. I'm sorry, Laura, I cut you off. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I was just I gonna love that so much though, because we, um, oh, go ahead, Laura. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I can go next. I definitely have a question for you next. Um, I love that y'all, first off, are, uh, focusing on grassroots organizations. And even this note, Lisa, that you just shared about helping them to get metrics. A lot of people don't know that, that giving circles normally are the first funders for a lot of startup and small grassroots organizations. So that in itself is the uniqueness of like us taking the chance, not even, I wouldn't say the chance, we're trusting these organizations. We mm -hmm. see them, right? To say, mm -hmm. we'll be the first ones to get the wave started which are advocacy and support. So I just specifically want to pull that out because that is very unique. And also um, maybe you can answer this, Laura, because Lisa said that when she started it 2018, so it takes them a, a year. It took you like a year, right? Lisa like to really get from the inception to actually getting the messaging out and saying, well, let me get, 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 you know, get the messaging out to this woman to join me in this effort. What attracted you all when y'all received uh, as a member? Like what, what made you say yes? Because I think that's also important for other circles to think about the messaging of how, because that, you know, recruitment or how would you even ask members to join in on this vision of starting a giving circle? Yeah. For me, I wasn't really involved in anything at the time, but I knew I wanted to be, and I didn't know how to do that. So, you know, different employers. I was part of um, volunteer committees working with United Way. You know, you're very familiar with the big names in the area. So how to get involved? I don't know. The universe worked in a different way. I met Lisa um, the summer of 2019, was it? Yep. Summer of uh, 2019. And we met through a mutual friend and she was just happened to be talking about this and how it's initiating and I knew right away I I want in. Like it just sounded great. Uh, it you know and it just it fit what I was looking for in that moment. And when I joined, I love the fact that we talked to 
so many different organizations that a lot of people have never heard of. So you're learning about, there's a ton. So you're learning about all these organizations. Another great part about it is if we don't choose them to donate to, a lot of our members will donate to all of them. Um, many of us have volunteered for the organizations. I am now very committed to one of the organizations that presented um, back in- 2020. 29, yeah, March 2020. 2020. Oh, right, first, right before yeah, March 2020. <laughs> and so I'm, really, I'm <laughs> truly involved with her committee and her um, organization. And it, it brought me to what I was looking for that I thought was missing in my life. So I, I love the fact that I don't know. The universe was just listening and put me in this path to meet her. And I'm so glad I have because it's been such a pleasure working along with Lisa and Lauren. Yes. I know I met so many people through this organization too. Yeah. The networking piece, we didn't talk about that. Yeah. The, just yeah. Cool. The hope was to actually build women leaders out of this so mm. that women got to meet each other and they mm. worked outside of this group together on projects. And then they learned about these not for profits. Then they volunteered, then they became a board member, and then they ran for office and became president of the United States. That's all. I mean, that, <laughs> we, gotta break, we gotta break that glass ceiling. That's my hope. But um, you know, really seriously, it, it, it we really wanted to build some women leaders, and, and we really have out of this too. And so it's a full circle thing. Yeah, well, Lori, y'all are speaking of... to like the four core things of what what exists of a giving circle. You just said it, Laura, like you you like. The universe and that sense of belonging. That's the first piece. You just spoke mm -hmm. to that. And then the learning piece, we discourse, right? That's the second theme of a giving circle is you learn and, and then you give and beyond the dollar. We hope to engage our members and support, look at our grantees as partners in other ways and mm -hmm. how we can support them. So I appreciate you so much for even sharing your testimony because those four pieces are what we all feel is the, the powerful uh, uh, uniqueness of the model itself is that learning, belonging, and just that community building piece of it. I totally agree. Well, yeah, I, uh, so you are networking. Oops, sorry. I was saying oh, no, go ahead, Lisa. Uh, Lauren, go ahead. <laughs> I think the networking community piece is just so important for so many of us. Um, I just want to really reiterate that. Like that's kind of why I got involved was to kind of see how we can, how I could really contribute overall to make a difference for nonprofits, like without having to write, you know, major checks, because let's be real, we're not all there. And it went to Mega Millions last night. I'm still trying, but <laughs> Same. I got close. Uh, <laughs> but really make that impact, but also to connect with other, you know, women in our community who have the same mindset, the same mission, you know, and get to know them and connect and all support each other too through professional endeavors, volunteer endeavors, personal endeavors, whatever it might be. I know a lot of great bonds have been formed through our group too. And just supporting other members through difficult times. You know, there's been some members who've gone through tough situations through COVID or their family have, and we've been there to really support them through those times too, and celebrate when they get through a challenge in their lives. And y'all have, uh, so y'all done a lot since your lunch, I see, because not only so y'all have two chapters or two branches because y'all aren't just in New York, right? Lisa, we're we're in like Charlotte, North Carolina as well. Run okay, by yeah, so Lauren, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Talk about yeah. that that expansion and what that like I, how y'all were able to expand to a whole nother state so quickly in such a short time. Yeah, you know, we were very fortunate. We have such a dedicated team down in Charlotte. It is actually was started uh, by two women who were from Buffalo, had moved down to Charlotte, had conversations during COVID, but it was just hard launching anything and waited till after COVID. And I just got an impact sheet about what they have done in the year, one year that they've been an establishment and just the organizations they've had an impact on in Charlotte. I mean, it's a big city, but to see these small organizations get the funding that they're getting and what they're able to do with it is just amazing. And I'm just so grateful for, for them. And actually a friend of mine from Buffalo moved down there and she joined them now. And uh, another friend put me in touch with a friend who was part of 100 Women Who Care out in Napa Valley. And when she moved to Charlotte, she joined. So she's part of that leadership team now. So we kind of have, you know, 
the, the, the four ladies leading the charge down there doing wonderful work. And I'm so pleased. I was able to be there for their first anniversary and, you know, kind of see the grantees and just thank them in person because you can never thank them enough for, for the work that they're doing. So I can't wait to go back for their second anniversary. Um, we also, uh, in Buffalo, seeing the impact COVID had on so many people, not just kids, not women, not men, not teenagers, but just everybody, uh, mental health was such a huge issue. And it was time to launch a mental health giving circle. And I knew that the proper name of that circle would be Jenny Circle, named after my great aunt Jenny, who suffered from mental health her whole life. And it was in live during a time when it was a huge stigma and really didn't get the help she needed because she was worried about how people would think she was or who she was. And so we launched that in March uh, 2022, last year. And unfortunately, uh, we've talked about this before, Taisha, uh, May 2022, evil came to Buffalo. And we had a terrible massacre of our brothers and sisters here. And it was then that that was our first grant meeting. And you know what? It made a difference. And we really made a difference and impact on a local organization here that was on the ground level, giving people the help they needed, just even if it was talking to people about how they were feeling, you know, knowing these people that are no longer there. Um, so it's it's grown. And, you know, our structure has kind of changed a little bit going into 2023 because you kind of, you know, tinker with things as you go along. And we're also looking to um, launch our youth giving circle, uh, this little heart of mine, and actually teach the youth what it is to run a giving circle, empower them, give them credit for school, have mentors work with them. And the hope is that they take this learning opportunity to make an impact on their community. And as they go off to college and they come back home, they continue that, road, that lifetime legacy of philanthropy. And they find ways to keep continuing to give back. Because if you teach children young enough about the impact that they can have, they carry that lesson with them for a lifetime. We've seen it. So good. Um, that is wonderful. I, what a beautiful way to honor your auntie, Lisa, and to land this um, circle after her. And you're so right. Y'all, our communities, um, and even still now, I, I even sometimes hate saying post-COVID because it's not post-COVID. It's like, it's 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 us now. And um, I love that you all are focusing on mental health just for not just a specific group or age or demographic, but for your community as a whole. Um, now, I know that um, this is great. This is so good. So I, you know, y'all are thriving. We love to see it. You're growing. But I'm sure it was and has been challenges along the way. Like you said, Lisa, you've had to pivot, make some, make some, you know, just staying flexible and making adjustments as you go. And I often tell people that I train that y'all to know one giving circle how you start basically is not how you have to finish so just go ahead and start and keep going but what what were some of the challenges that you did experience in and just in this journey so far that you feel that people should know about and just um you know just be thoughtful of as they move forward and what message would you have for them with how they can push through the through those challenges sure the first one that I can tell you was COVID. We were only a year old, mm -hmm. you know, when we actually then got shut down and we were so thoughtful about our May giving cycle because we just asked our members, we don't care who you donate to. There's so much need right now. Just please make a donation. Let us know the organization and we're going to share it out so that other people know who we're supporting so they can possibly look at supporting them. Because you remember when at first the world was decimated. I mean, there was so much need. Um, and then we just kept it going. And then by 2021, I think it was Lauren, correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong, in May, we decided it's time we can do something safe outside social distance, but we need to be together again. Yeah, People need to see each other, yeah. they need to connect, they have been isolated, and they just needed that camaraderie for a reason to come out and be together. And we had a very good turnout for that yeah. first meeting. And we never looked back and people said, well, are you going to keep offering the, the option of remote? I said, no, you need to be here. You need to see these groups. You need to see the passion in their eyes. 
you need to under feel and touch what they do every single day because without being in that room it's hard for people to understand exactly the impact that these organizations have and i think the second wave of it now is post covid and lauren and laura can talk to this a little bit more too it's getting people to meetings they're sending their check, but just dragging people to meetings is a really hard thing. And we've been having a little conversation about how to get people back. And I'll let Lauren and Laura talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, I think when we were starting to get back in person, you know, it had, we had such great momentum, you know, leading up to March, 2020, and that last meeting right before shutdown, literally days, days before shutdown, was the biggest group we ever had. And then, of course, during COVID, you know, people's priorities shift. I think there's a lot of uncertainty of what was going on. But then, yeah, in May 2021, when we started getting back to in-person events, you know, it really gives people the opportunity to meet, to meet the, the presenters, these people who are starting these nonprofits, talk to them before and after their presentations, ask questions, but really feel the emotion um, of, of what they're doing. These people come to it, you know, and they're presenting, they are, they've started a nonprofit for out of their the goodness of their heart because they saw a need whether their own need a community need or just saw something that was missing in the community and I mean there have been presenters who are in tears crying to us explaining you know their situation and why they they you know are doing what they are doing to support their nonprofit the people in their community um and within their their niche so it is hard trying to get our members like to come back in person. Like Lisa said, yes, we'll send a check, but the networking piece of what we all, you know, what another for why we joined and to hear support these presentations um, is so important. So we've had a location, and it's the same location every meeting this past year, and that's been kind of helpful, I think, because it gives some it gives our members stability. They know where they're going, they know when the meetings are going to be. We plan them the dates out the year in advance, they can mark their calendars for those dates, the four dates, you know, a year in advance. So it's on their calendars. Um, I think that's helpful. They can just block the time and that's where they have to be that night, you know, and show up. And now with having the same location, every meeting, like that's extremely helpful too. Because again, you think you get that consistency and it just continues to build as well. We're also trying to use our social media platforms like that much more impactfully. For example, when we started, you know, we have a Facebook page, we have Instagram, and we have LinkedIn. Particularly on LinkedIn, we had a LinkedIn group. And the group, right. like, it's not this, we couldn't tag other organizations, like, we couldn't share the posts through our, to our networks on our LinkedIn pages. So we made the shift, um, I think it was in the spring, I think it was for our May meeting, we made the announcement yes. um, to a page. Now, the page is more of a company page, but it allows, like, I'll, post to social media when it was the group, it was posting as Lauren Lewis posting, not 50 Fabulous Women Giving Circle. Now right. I can post as a, as 50 Fabulous Women Giving, 50 Fabulous Women Giving Circle and Laura could, Lisa could, you know, any of the moderators of the page can post in that voice. So it's giving um, more of a reach now. It's giving more of a reach. Yep. And then now it allows us the opportunity to, to share each post to our own personal pages as well, where we can do that before. And now we can tag the organizations and people at our meetings too. So that's really kind of, that's hoping to continue to grow and develop and re, kind of rebuild that page to have more reach as well. Um, and we're trying to think of other things we could do within within that page. And one of them is, you know, spotlighting members. Why why did you join 50 Fabulous Women Giving Circle? What has it meant to you? What have you gotten out of this experience? And that's a still work in progress. We haven't quite launched that yet. Um, but that's one of the things we're, we're planning to do to highlight members and they can share it. It, we tag them, it has, creates more reach, and people can see the people who are involved in the group to um, really, um, you know, think, oh, I want to be a part of that. You know, I've had friends come up to me and say, hey, I see that group, that 50 Fabulous Women Grooving Circle group you're posting about. What is it? Tell me more. How can I get involved? Like, and they say, I, it seems like it's a really great group. I love what you're doing. I love seeing the organizations you're supporting. Now I want to be involved. So just kind of doing all of that type of stuff has really helped to. I think re-engage members and we'll continue to re-engage members as we continue to go through the next phases. This is so good. From an engagement stance, um, Lauren, you just dropped some gems because everyone, <laughs> all, I think all of us, just everyone is like, how do we get people more engaged or how do, you know, because we're all 
I tell you, time is everything for everyone now as people have prioritized what, you know, what they want to invest and what they want to show up for because we just, right? And so you said, you know, the same location at every meeting. So a, a cadence is what I hear is the best practice for mm-hmm. you all, your members. Um, giving them advance of those meeting dates in advance, a year in advance, that's, that's really wonderful. Really leveraging social media to tell the story, spotlighting your members, um, and y'all just seem fun. So I feel like, Lord, <laughs> is there some, how are y'all also embedding a little sprinkling some fun in, in your engagement practice? I, I feel it from y'all, but I'm just wondering. I feel like y'all have something else going on. I don't know if we do, but I feel like we should. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I think it's just the spirit of energy. y'all. Like, it's just, yeah, and I think I that think helps. Like, more that we like, can do. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's you know we're funny. I mean that's kind of part no, of it. Yeah, obviously um, that. Know, but it, it is, I it, wonder if there's a way. I'm gonna th- I'm gonna use this as a takeaway to see if there's something I can come. I'm a coach for my job in IT, and I, and we always have to do facilitation workshops, and you try to make something enjoyable so it's not just PowerPoint deck after PowerPoint right. deck. So I'm wondering if I can implement that. So stay tuned and. Well, to let you know if we institute some fun, but we are just a fun group and it's cocktail driven and we all love the chat. And so, so Laura, is, Laura is now the official fun ambassador. I love that. Oh, oh designated right. fun right. ambassador. Okay. We don't have that, that as a title. Oh, we can put it as a title. <laughs> Okay, I'm definitely bringing y'all back for part two so that we can bring yeah. your Charlotte team. And then, mm hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm um, thinking we have. I'm asking you, how's that fun ambassador role going? I'm yeah. thinking we have theme days. Maybe <laughs> wear a certain <laughs> color. Oh, if we wear a hat. Oh. All right. We can do a little, we can do a lot with Good this, time. Laura. I think I like it. We could do a lot. <laughs> y'all, y'all heard it first. Look at this little brain working <laughs> session. You thought you was coming for a spotlight. And we had a whole <laughs> uh, ideation <laughs> session. I love this so much. And I know we're at time. Um, how do I think it? I want y'all to share. So collective giving, um, I don't know if y'all have seen some of the latest data about giving, but they are saying that individual donations and donors are down. So like that means that a lot of um, concentrated uh, donations are coming from mostly wealthy people. And so we actually need more people, more giving circles will help kind of disrupt that and keep it where more everyday people are giving to philanthropic causes. And so with that being said, what do y'all feel is is like the future of collective give like with giving circles? Like what are y'all optimistic about or or what are you most uh, uh hopeful hopeful uh in our collective efforts to what we're doing to you know create change in our communities and such? That's a great question. And actually I'm working <clears throat> on a book about this. So really? yes, Let's plug in the book. Well, hey, you know, I'm working <laughs> on getting, I got to get married September 1st and then I have a honeymoon and then after that I get back to the book. Okay. They're both planning <laughs> weddings right now. Yes, indeed. Oh, in their free time. In our free time. Yeah. So basically I'm going to use a movie reference that a lot of you will know. It's back to the future, right? So basically giving circles aren't anything new. Giving circles are America. It is part of our democracy. It's how we became and founded a society and everybody got together and collectively instead of money helped each other raise crops or build a house. It's not a new concept. We're going back to it because what we realize is you don't need to be a millionaire to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Everybody can make a difference and you don't have to give a thousand dollars. You can give what you can give and by combining it, Our motto at 50 Fabulous Women is together, we can make a difference. It's more of an impact. But more importantly, people are looking for ways to give back to their community where they feel included, where there's diversity is respected, and there's opportunity to give in ways that no one has ever asked them to be part of before. It's a great democracy uh, in action moment of having a giving circle in your community. Who wouldn't want to be part of that? Mm -hmm. Of that. So the future is giving circles. That's my answer to you. <laughs> Together we can make a difference. I love that. My, and my and the motto. Okay, well, Laura um, and Lauren, why don't y'all plug in with the people how they can 
support your efforts. Where can they find y'all? I know you say you're on LinkedIn and Facebook, but go ahead and shoot your shot with the people. Yes, yeah, so definitely. You can follow us on our Facebook page, 50 Fabulous Women Giving Circle. And then there also is 50 Fabulous Giving Cir 50 Fabulous Women Giving Circle of Charlotte. Um, we have our LinkedIn page, 50 Fabulous Women Giving Circle. So you can definitely like and follow that page. Um, Laura, I'll let you give the Instagram handles. <laughs> right there. Right there. Okay. Buffalo. Set, set, uh, Buffalo. speak it. FFWGC. Mm -hmm. And then Jenny Circle uh, also has their mm -hmm. own pages as well. And that's all you have to look up is Jenny Circle and, and you can find it. That's yeah, great. I think anyone can go to our website as well. It's ffwgc.org. And there will be links to the Buffalo chapter, the Charlotte, the Charlotte chapter, um, the mental health giving circle, and then the youth giving circle that will be formed as well. Like everything's really all housed right on that ffwgc.org website. Love that. All right. This was, I can talk to y'all all day because y'all are just <laughs> absolutely fun. I cannot wait to bring y'all back for us to have another conversation with your Charlotte ladies. Um, Cause I think that that is so good. And we're going to definitely talk more about this fun ambassador role, which now I'm thinking about what's that? Um, what is that Laura? That's, that's, that's the website working. so they can get it. Say it out loud <laughs> in case they can't see it. Oh, okay. FFWGC.org. Perfect. Um, picture of us. <laughs> I love that. And, and your graphics, it's pink. My favorite color is pink. So even um, just like the liveliness of y'all graphics and the color uh, is very robust. Well, thank you ladies so thank much thank for, um, for y'all work. I, we see y'all. We see y'all so far. If I had like virtual flowers or like real, I would literally be giving them to y'all <laughs> um, because I, I really do admire the work that y'all are doing and how y'all are growing so fast. We, we wish you continued success. Y'all go out, follow them, support them. Hopefully do y'all have levels where people, if they don't join the giving circle, but they want to contribute and give, they can still do that. Not yet, but we will. Yeah. There you go. Something else to think about. It's just a way for, you know, this work for everyone to, like you said, we're all together in this together, making a difference. So y'all check them out and we'll see you at the next Giving Circle Spotlight. Take good care of yourself and I'll see you around. <laughs>